Hey, Dan from Eagle here. Welcome back to our video series with tips and tricks for contractors when updating the resume using Microsoft Word. Today I'm going to talk about headers and footers and a few tricks for using them properly. Headers and footers are a great way to keep your document organized, give it a consistent feel, and keep your reader up to date on where they are in the resume. So here's a sample resume we've been using in past videos. You see I manually put in a header and I've manually put in a footer. It even can look nice and I can format it to maybe make the font a little bit lighter, bring the size down, that way it doesn't quite stand out with the rest of the resume. However, it can still cause a few errors and issues. Specifically, one of the main ones is down here with the footer. If I decide to maybe add an extra line, all of a sudden, my footer drops to the next page. To fix that, I would need to highlight it, bring it all the way up, knock this one down. It's a lot of extra work each time. So the other area that it can cause issues and frustration is for your recruiters. Let's say they want to copy and paste some information from your resume to submit it to a client in a summary or to put it into a proposal. If I have some information down here and they want to grab it, when they highlight it, they're going to also pick up your header and footer. Again, this is just going to cause a little bit of extra work for them as now they need to go through, edit, and remove that. So, let's look at a more efficient way to do this. A way that most people do do, however, we still sometimes see this other manual way. So if I just delete these headers and footers, You'll see what I can actually do is easily go to the insert, headers, footers, and now I can choose between some templates for headers, or I can just go to edit header, and now it'll put it in itself. Now I can just type that information in, and I may even want to use the tab feature that we discussed in a previous video, just by hitting tab, and it scrolls over, maybe I'll just edit that. Go to page layout, paragraph, hit my tabs, clear them all. I actually wanted it 6.5 to the right. Perfect. Now when I close it, you see this header, this design section, and when I have a header footer open, lets me edit a whole bunch. I can also just simply close my header footer that way. And now it's going to appear on all of my pages. See, it actually automatically appears on page two. And if I try to highlight, it's not going to highlight that header footer and carry it over. So one of the main reasons we see people use headers and footers is for page numbers. Now I could, technically, as you see, I can just double click and it actually opens the footer. I could simply manually type in page one and close it. And it will transfer over, but now I'm going to have to, it's going to cause a lot of extra work, a lot of concerns later on. So it's easier to use the page number feature that Microsoft Word provides. So for example, I can just delete that. I'll go to close. I can simply go to insert. Over here, go to page number, which is right beside our header footer section. Maybe one at the bottom of the page. And I actually just say exactly where I want it. So I want plain number. Maybe throw it over to the, on the right side. And now my page number is right there in the footer for me to do. I can even again, double click into the footer. If I right click on that highlighted page number and go to format page numbers and I have a few options. Maybe I want to change the number format, set its letters or have the dashes. Um, I can even say start at if for whatever reason I want it to start at page two, I can do that and it'll do that from there. There's a lot of pieces to headers and footers that I can go over and for the most part I'll let you to explore them all on your own but I do want to finish off by discussing a common frustration that comes up with headers and footers and that's how to change it from page to page. So let's say, for example, on my next page, instead of the resume, I actually want to put in some references. So I'm going to add references, person number one, and their contact information, and then keep going. But at the top, it says resume. I'd rather that said references since that's the section I'm in right now. So if I double click, I can change this to references and close it. But now what's going to happen is at the top in my resume section, it still says references. So then if, or it gets frustrating. So if I try to change that back to resumes, it says it again there. So the only way that you can change this is by having them in different sections. In section breaks and page breaks we discussed in a previous video. So at the end of the, where I want it to be done, I'm just going to go to insert and I'll insert, or sorry, page layout breaks and I'll do my section break. Now the references are on another page. I know that because if I hit this pilker or paragraph mark, 
See there's section break, references are on not just another page, they're in a whole other section. Now I'm not done yet, because now when I double click in, as you see it opens up that design thing and there's this button that says link to previous. I want to make sure that's unchecked. If it's checked, it's going to make all the sections have the same, but when I unclick it, now I can easily change this to references, close that, here I've got references, up here it still says resumes, and I'm set. There are some basic tricks for headers and footers. As I mentioned, there are many different things you can do here, so feel free to explore them and ask any questions in the comments section. I'd be glad to help you out. Until then, have a great day and happy resuming.